Hello, I'm Jack from the Denso Service Department and today I'm here to talk to you about compressor replacement. Denso make around 700 different models of compressors. I'm not going to talk about the correct fitment procedure for all of them because that would take about a year. Instead, I'm going to talk about basic installation faults and how best to avoid them. The first thing you should ask yourself is, well, why are we replacing the compressor in the first place? The cause of the failure could be system related. In this case, if you fit another compressor, you'll end up with a second compressor failure. You must check that the system and all components are in correct serviceable working order before fitting a compressor. The most common insulation faults that we see are contamination, system related, fitment and assembly, or procedure. The first thing I'd like to talk about is contamination. What is it and how does it occur? Contamination is a substance or particles that should not be in the AC system. These can be particles of internal failed compressor components or foreign substances that have been introduced. Here is a sample of oil that's been recovered from a failed compressor. This type of failure is commonly called the Black Death from AC repair shops. It contains particles of failed compressor and the oil has been broken down by heat and or foreign substances that have been introduced. This is Denso ND8 oil. As you can see, it is clear in colour and runs quite freely. This is what ND8 oil should look like. This is ND8 oil, but it's had dye added. It's similar, but it's fluoro green in colour. Some AC repair shops add dye for leak checking. The oil in this condition is still okay. This is ND8 oil that's had dye added. It also contains moisture. As you can see, it is milky in appearance, not clear, and oil in this condition will cause a compressor failure. So what's the best way of preventing this? Well, flushing. It's critical that the AC system is left 100% clean before fitting a new compressor. There are many different types and brands of flushing systems out on the market, you'll need to find one that best suits your needs. The most important thing with flushing is that no flushing agent or residue is left in the system and the system's left 100% clean. Any components that can trap residue must be replaced. These include the condenser, dryer, TX valves, and also the compressor. You should never try to flush a compressor. Always refer to the service manual for the vehicle you're working on for correct removal, replacement, specification and procedures. Let's take a look at the condenser. This is an aluminium multi-flow condenser with a built-in receiver dryer. It contains a desiccant bag inside there that must be replaced when you're replacing the compressor. Basically, this section is a filter for your AC system. If you're replacing the engine on your car, you wouldn't keep and reuse the old oil filter. The same goes for your AC system. Here is one of the tubes that make up the condenser. As you can see, it has very fine passages that can easily become blocked with contamination. A blocked condenser will cause problems. If in doubt, you should replace the condenser. All genuine Denso compressors fitted with a label which will state the type of oil that must be used in the system. This ND type oil is specific for Denso. This is Denso ND8 oil. It's specific for Denso and it's the most common type used at present. This is a tin of ND11 oil. It's used in electric compressors for hybrid vehicles. We expect to see this become more common in the future. Always use the type of oil that the compressor and system was designed for to avoid creating extra problems. Denso compressors come pre-filled with oil. If you were just replacing the compressor, you'll need to drain the oil out of the old compressor and measure it, drain the oil out of the new compressor 
and refill the new compressor with the same amount of oil that was in the old compressor. There is a procedure for this that must be followed. All compressors, except for electric ones from hybrid vehicles, are fitted with a magnetic clutch or a DL pulley. Magnetic clutches have a specified air gap. If the air gap is too large, the compressor clutch will not engage. If it is too small, this can cause the clutch to drag or lock, which will make the compressor pump continually. Either way, you've got a problem. The compressor's air gap is usually shim adjusted. These come in a range of sizes, so you can set the compressor clutch's air gap to the correct specification. Some compressors are fitted with what we call a DL pulley. This is different to a magnetic clutch because it cannot disengage, which means the compressor's crankshaft is always turning. This is a variable displacement compressor and it cycles from 5% efficiency to 100% efficiency. In the event of a failure locking the compressor, the DL pulley is designed to break so the pulley can spin freely. This will save the drive belt so it can drive other components like the alternator and water pump. There is a run-in procedure for starting the car's engine for the first time after fitting a new compressor. It is most important that you follow this procedure. If you don't, you can break the DL pulley and then you're up for another compressor. One point that's somewhat overlooked or thought not so important is evacuation. Why is evacuation necessary? Well, it's important to pull any air and moisture out of the system before charging with refrigerant. This can only be done at a negative pressure of 100 kPa or 14.7 psi. At this pressure, water boils and then the vapour is pulled out of the system. Remember that oil sample? ND8 oil that contains dye and water? Oil in this condition will cause the compressor to fail. The best way to prevent that is make sure you pull the correct vacuum and you keep all components capped and sealed before fitment. Our quality assurance team here at Denso received compressor warranty claims that could have easily been avoided by following these simple tips. Unfortunately for those customers, we have to reject their claims. I hope these tips have been helpful and remember, Always check the workshop manual for correct specifications and procedures when replacing compressors.